What is the creepiest, most disturbing internet rabbit hole you've gone down and why? Blogs by people who are obsessed with losing limbs and or having them replaced with hooks, etc. Some went through with accidents where they mashed their hands beyond repair in order to achieve their goal. I bought my brother a taser from Amazon for his birthday one time. Looking at some of the questions there was one asking if it hurt. The answer went something like, it does not, I've tased myself in the neck 30 times. Very, very interested in this, I go to his Amazon profile, where you can see what else he has reviewed, and he reviewed a katana and stuff like that of similar nature. Still interested, so I type his name into Facebook and find a profile with a picture of him holding his katana. The first thing I notice is that he's from my city. Second thing is there are so many people posting to his Facebook saying he's the devil and they can't believe what he's done and they hope he rots and stuff like that. Extremely interested at this point, I Google his name and find news articles that he stabbed a guy in the chest in his apartment with a katana, then fled and was later caught by police. Turns out he was very delusional and really needed help. He's now in jail and according to the article, looks like he's getting the help he needs. It was a very wild ride from just looking at the stupid questions people ask about products on Amazon. There's a dock called The Bridge, which captured 23 of the 24 suicides from the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco in 2004. Apparently, The Bridge is wildly popular suicide site. By 2004, there had been more than 1,200 suicides with a 98% death rate. Anyway, it's really dark and sent me on a little research expedition of the suicides. Apparently, the 2% that survive say they instantly regret a jumping mid-air. And that starts to make you think about suicides and how much pain people are in to take that step. And yet, there is a shock of clarity once they've done the irreversible. Just reading about that desperation and sadness triggered so much in me. I really can't go down those rabbit holes anymore. Saudi Arabia's leading executioner, Mohammed Saad al-Bashi, he mostly decapitates people with a sword. I watched and read interviews with him. I wanted to know if that shit haunts him. No, it doesn't. He's already teaching his son to follow in his footsteps. His children also help him clean the blood off his sword. Then I started looking into what was considered capital offenses and other punishments used. Stoning is one. Certain crimes will get the beheaded body crucified. Deaths on Mount Everest and how a lot of the bodies are still up there. There was a wiki rabbit hole I fell into after listening to the case file episode on David Sharp. Read not only about him but also green boots this couple that got separated, etc. Due to the extremely cold temperatures, the bodies aren't that decomposed, so they still look recent enough. It's been years or decades. It's creepy and sad. Some bodies have been there so long, they're used as markers for climbers. What is also sad is that there have been efforts to remove them, but doing so is extremely dangerous because of the altitude, temperatures, and uneven ground. People have died attempting it in the past. Not sure if they've managed to succeed since I last read about it in 2018. Researching Attachment Therapy As used on kids diagnosed with attachment disorders, aka holding time, compression therapy, coercive restraint therapy, rebirthing. I don't feel like typing out the details, but a quote from Wiki and Link is below. It's messed up and has resulted in several child deaths and lots of long-lasting trauma. I have no idea why I kept reading and watching videos, etc., but I spent an entire night researching it. It was horrifying. Maybe I felt like I owed it to the victims to read their stories. I don't remember. A certain feature of many of these therapies is the use of the psychological, physical, or aggressive means to provoke the child to catharsis, ventilation of rage, or other sorts of acute emotional discharge. To do this, a variety of course of techniques are used, including scheduled holding, binding, rib cage stimulation, e.g. tickling, pinching, knuckling, and or licking. Children may be held down, may have several adults lie on top of them, or their faces may be held so they can be forced to engage in prolonged eye contact. Sessions may last from three to five hours, with some sessions reportedly lasting longer. I have fallen down too. Both lasted about a week. First was John slash Jane Doe's who have never been claimed or identified. Second was people who have disappeared without a trace. I feel this one tugged more on my emotional strings, especially stories involving kids. One that has stuck with me is a little boy who disappeared on a scout hike, Jared Negretti. This is one of my greatest fears when I was take kids hiking. 
A sci-fi timeline PDF I found a while back. I think it was on the world building sub. It was a timeline of humanity that started it off relatively normal, detailing human evolution as they colonized Mars and the stars beyond. It descended into body horror when they came into contact with an advanced race that for some reason I forgot gene modded the majority of humans into non-sentient species and seeded them across the galaxy. It then went into great detail with each of these species separately and their climb back to sentience. It ended with one of the new humans that evolved back to sentience standing beside an original human skull. I haven't been able to find it since, but shit got dark. There's this guy on Facebook, I wish I could remember his name, but he married his sex doll and has photos together of them everywhere. At first I thought it was a troll account, but the more I looked, the creepier it got. The dates on the photos dated back years, and he showed off his doll's wardrobe and all the possessions he had of hers and then there were multiple friend accounts of different sex dolls on his page that's completely public, but genuinely the weirdest part to me was that he lived on a farm in the middle of nowhere. Like imagine if someone accidentally ended up there. Edit. I spent an hour last night looking for it, and surprisingly, it's apparently more common than I thought. WTF is wrong with people anyways. I'll look some more today because it was a viral share. Damn, I wish I remember his name. Years ago, I watched a video on YouTube of Elvis' last phone call, which was recorded. In the comments, there was this guy who had claimed to know Elvis personally and who went on about how he was in his final days. I grew very suspicious. I clicked his YouTube channel and found more comments on other dead celebrity videos of him claiming to be a family friend. I searched this guy's name and found his weird ass fucking website. It was the most bizarre shit I've ever seen. It was full of long posts about how this guy was a lead designer and architect in some important buildings worldwide. It also chronicled all of his celebrity friends. Guy was definitely schizophrenic, I assume. Finding his website was just so odd. It's like looking into a portal into his mind. Since then, I've become very interested in schizophrenia and I've happened to stumble upon others who seem to have it. This one guy on LinkedIn is a writer. He goes on these rambles on his LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter about a girl who was killed but his sentences are all circular, if that makes sense. Almost like talking with someone with dementia who keeps repeating the same thing over and over. Except this guy has been doing the same thing for years. Just lost in a possible fairy tale, the mind is fucked. Uh, this isn't really that great of an answer as it's the first thing that comes to mind, but I watched a lot of To Catch a Predator footage early in COVID. Those people are disgusting. And it's so weird to see some plain ass dude be otherwise totally normal seeming but have disgusting desires and then turn into a lying machine when they get caught. That moment when someone realizes they're exposed, millions of people are going to know and they're also going to lose their career, job, family, friends, etc. It's just a very complex, interesting and gross human reaction to see. I was a lurker in a car forum for many years. This was probably eight or so years ago. One time, someone posted a thread that linked to an insurance auto website that resold accident cars to reclaim money. There was a whole category of cars labeled biohazard, and these are the cars that end up with a body fluids in them. Giant shits from being in an accident, drive-by shootings with blood everywhere, even suicide cars with brains blasted on the roof. These auto auctions don't want to clean that mess up, so they'll sell the cars cheap. Some people in the forum even found news articles that correspond with the murder, accident, etc. in a particular car. It was incredibly creepy, but I admittedly spent hours and hours sometimes looking through these disgusting, tragic cars. One of the weirdest for me was reading about the violence in Yugoslavia during World War II, especially about the Croatian Ustasa and the Jasenovac concentration camp. The entire area was beset by civil war with shocking violence originating from multiple parties, but the anecdotes about the Ustasha stand out. A high-ranking member of the Nazi party visited Croatia, where the Nazis had helped establish a puppet state. Witnessing the extent of the violence himself, he was quoted as saying, this is enough to make a man vomit. Jasenovac is something no mortal man could bear to witness. I watched Inception a little while ago, and I always loved the scene where they infiltrated the Winter Fortress that had me thinking about those Hydra James Bond-esque villain lairs up high in the snowy mountains which I thought were a complete fantasy. That is until I did lots of searching and asking around and slowly but surely 
learned that people with lots of money and connections can get away with pretty much anything on this planet, like building a lavish bunker on the side of a mountain in the Swiss Alps, which I mistakenly thought was sacred and untouchable. Laws are arbitrary when the price is right. These lavish bunkers are so well hidden and impossible to find that 99.9% .9 of people won't even know about their existence. Those that do are paid well to keep quiet. I even heard about one with a retractable helipad, so the entrance is essentially covered in snow and impossible to see. As someone who lives to explore, especially remote places, I naturally wanted to figure out how I could uncover the secret for myself. But digging more just led me to secretive people who would never disclose any clues and potentially jeopardize a location. It gives me the heebie-jeebies, thinking about the power that 0.001% truly has and how no one really knows what they're doing behind closed doors. Money buys them their own set of rules. Those who don't talk, those who talk don't know. I wanted to learn more about gender dysphoria to better understand trans people and such. I learned about this set of twins, Bruce and Brian Reimer, born in the 1960s. They were boys, but Bruce had a botched circumcision, so he had gender reassignment surgery and was raised as a girl named Brenda. The twins were sent to a doctor named John Money, who wanted to prove that gender identity is learned. He made the twins as children role-play sexual positions to reinforce the gender reassignment. Brian developed schizophrenia in his teenage years, and Brenda never learned to live as a girl despite constant reinforcement and hormone therapy. At 14, he was told of his surgery at birth, rejected his forced female identity, and took on the name David. David Reimer committed suicide in 2004. Not so much went down the rabbit hole willingly, but got shoved. A League of Legends friend came out to me as a pedophile, age range of attraction 3 to 4. He confessed every last feeling he had, and I just sat on my headset in complete stunned silence as he explained how he felt trapped because of his attractions, hated himself, and wanted to die. I was stupid and didn't try to figure out how to record anything. He claimed he hadn't done anything, but admitted some sketchy things that I would not agree were victimless actions. Stopped talking to him, and his accounts disappeared from my friends list. Part of me agrees with some frustrations he had with seeking help from professionals and how many societal blockers we have for someone to get resources to prevent a non-offender from building up to actual action. It just struck me how young he sounded, clearly in college. I still really don't know how to process it. Revulsion and pity is all I can identify about how I feel about the conversation. I won't let myself give the token, I hope he got the help he needed, because I genuinely think there just aren't the resources out there for that sort of thing, so saying it would feel trite and lack meaning. I haven't played LOL since. The memories are just too real after all these years, especially when I realized he would always play the character Annie or Tristana, a child and a gnomish creature that looks like a child. Just ugh. Ten years ago or so, I went through a phase of regularly reading through a martial arts forum, maybe Bullshito or similar, the kind where people investigated outed frauds or unsavory characters in martial arts. Well. One day, I came across an old thread consisting of a video and hundreds of pages of comments. I can't remember the OP title, but the video looked like it was shot on an 80s or older camcorder and showed a karate dojo, into which an apparently homeless guy went one evening who seemed to have some mental issues as he claimed to have learned Kung Fu from Jesus, IRRC. At first, they seemed to humor him, but then I think he asked to spark the instructor, to which the instructor took offense. The sparring rapidly deteriorated into a beating, ended with the karate guy stomping on the head of the unconscious guy. Several students dragged the now lifeless-looking body through the dojo and out the back door. I was stunned, and feared I just watched a real-life snuff movie at my desk on my lunch break at work. The hundreds of subsequent pages in the thread were a matter of class and amateur detective work to the point, again, if I recall correctly, that the karate guy was identified and located and even members of his family ended up posting in the thread. In the end though, nothing ever came of it, as the victim was never identified and no body was ever found, so no charges pressed. It was three months ago, in the Ask Reddit thread, what is something you regret knowing or something? A user called out another user as the person we all know exists among us but have never met. The comment was removed by a moderator, so I can't tell you either user involved, but let me sum it up for you. The user being called out is clearly a psychopath. Her entire post history is that 
they have a pseudo-sexual desire to vivisect and torture another person to death. She admits she has this desire, and it is a pretty obsessive desire based on their framing, and believe wholeheartedly that everyone has these desires, and they are normal. They adamantly argue that the only reason people deny having those feelings is because of the social taboo of it, and that everyone around them is lying to save face, that they are the only person with the gall to admit it. They claim they will never act on it because the fear of getting caught is too great, but they seem to be their own inhibition. She has multiple buried dead in the water threads in the subreddit asking questions like, why are people afraid to talk about this shared feeling? What is your murder fantasy? How would you dissect a living person if you knew you could get away with it? They claim to be asexual. Clearly, that otherwise sexual desire is redirected toward this based on the enthusiasm they have in talking about it. She claims that the only people she has shared these feelings with in her real life are her mother and her husband. The most unsettling thing is, the last I checked, she was trying with her husband to get pregnant. It's been on my mind a lot as of late, in that it is a prime example of a mentally unwell person saying, I'm like this and I'm normal, therefore everyone is like this because normal people are like this, and this concept has been coming up a lot in my personal life as of late.